welcome, welcome everybody to a new episode of Conversation for Days. Podcast. My name is the Rev Frankie. We're back at it again with my co-host Kalilo. That's and right, that's right. this week, man, we got a great topic. But before, we want to shout out to all of our fans for days for supporting us. If it's on YouTube, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, even people have been DMing us and really liking us bringing some guests. So we're going to try our best to bring more and more, you know, newer guests every week to have 100%. good discussions and debates. And also don't forget to subscribe, to like, comment on YouTube, and then give us, you know, five-star ratings if you can on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Like, why not? You know, it's, it's so easy. And before we start the topic, we want to introduce our two ladies guests here today. So first, we're going to start with Florence. So Florence, for all of our fans for days, give us a little introduction about your, your, your current life. Like, what do you do? Who are you? Okay, who am I? <laughs> I ask myself that question every day. Um, so I'm a psychology student. Uh, I'm starting my, uh, my PhD in the fall in clinical psychology. Congrats. Um, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it was a lot of work to, to get there. Um, <laughs> and I fast tracked. So I went, I'm graduating from my bachelor's on Monday and I'm starting my PhD oh. <laughs> this fall. Congrats, congrats. That's amazing. <laughs> thank you. Big applause. <laughs> And in the meantime, right now, I'm working as a research analyst for my supervisor, um, so my PhD supervisor. Mm -hmm. I specialize in anxiety, uh, more precisely, generalized anxiety. Uh, I want to work with young adults. I would love to work amongst university students because we are under a lot of pressure. So, so that is my goal. Yeah, I guess it's a good summary. <laughs> that was that was great. That was great. And also the fact that she's actually in psychology, which in our podcast, exactly. we, we like to bring psychology things and philosophy too. I think she's going to bring some good, you know what I mean? Some good facts, some good points. I'm excited for it. And also on the right, we also have Noura in the building. So yes, Noura, yes. similar to Florence, give us a little intro for our fans for days about yourself. All right. All right. Well, hi. My name is Noura. I'm happy to be there. Afro baby on Instagram. Afro <laughs> underscore B B Y Y. You already know. Um, <laughs> so I <laughs> I graduated last year with the uh, Bachelor of Biology and Biomedical Sciences. Okay. Currently, I'm not working in my department. I'm working with National Defense. Mm -hmm. Um, more is is not in my field, but hey, it's still a job. We like yeah, it, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also have a YouTube channel, so the channel is in French, but you know, since we are in a bilingual province, you guys can, you know, holla at my yeah. channel, sure. and it's Noura, N-O-U-R-A-A, -A, Talks, Talks, yeah, <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very happy to be here, and let's go. Okay. That's amazing. And if you're somebody like me, you know, I'm, I'm still learning French, so, you know, I, I try to immerse myself in a lot of French kind of programs, French kind of, you know, shows, all of this stuff. So that's oh, cool. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm supposed to teach you French, Kalilo, but I'm too late. Uh -huh. I'm that's that's the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so great. So everybody knows who everybody is. So now we can start off with the topic of today. So we're going to talk about role models. We're going to talk about beauty, aesthetics when it comes to role models versus to intelligence. So to start off, okay, so I'm going to ask everybody here. So what would you consider a good role model in society nowadays? So who wants, who has an answer? Who wants to start with who, what would be a good role model? Yeah. Oh, she would pick somebody. <laughs> it's always good. I, mean, I can start. I, I, I can start. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I do think it is subjective to the person's aspiration, you know, mm -hmm. so the person's personal goal, yep. because obviously if I'm into psychology, I'm probably going to look up to someone that is in my domain. Mm -hmm. So I, I do think it's subjective in that sense. So I don't think there's necessarily like the perfect role model, just because mm -hmm. there's so much indiv individuality in our society that you can't have a perfect mold to define, yep. you know, the, the ideal role model. 
Um, so that that was kind of the first point that I wanted to bring in in terms yep. of role models that it's it is subjective. And also another thing is that yes, it's wonderful to look up to people, but okay, there was that echo. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful to look up to people, but also you have to you have to stay focused on your own you know personal goal especially with celebrities I feel like people sometimes it almost crosses the line of obsession when it comes to role model and I think it's important to realize that they are not you you are not them and yes they can you know be a role model for certain areas of your life but you have to also focus on your own personal goals and your own post personal motivation because you're Yep. You're your own personal self, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Before you look I at anything else, there's yourself first, right? Very true. Exactly. That's always important. And how about you, Nora? Um, I agree with what you just said, uh, Florence. And I also want to add to that, that most, most of the time when it becomes, it, I, I have a feeling that young adults, we seem to um, idealize people and we see them as a perfect person yep. and at the same time it makes it harder for us to relate to them so for for that I believe that we need to focus not necessarily on the person but on what they do and on what they do to make them that makes them human relatable as, as well as what they do that makes them you know our role model so we That's don't right. we shouldn't necessarily just have their image as oh, she is perfect or he is perfect. I need to be exactly like him because it's not going to work that way. That's right. No, absolutely. And just to even piggyback off of that, like, you know, you, you see your favorite celebrity on TV and it's like, you always see the, the best version of them, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, it's so easy to fall into that trap where it's like, because, you know, we're with ourselves every single day. We know, we know our positives and our negatives. You know, we know our pros and our cons. So it's so easy to like fall into doubt. Being like, especially oh, your cons we know especially your cons yeah that's right right so it's so easy to be like oh they don't deal with that you know day to day when it's in fact they could have some stuff that like brings them back to reality but we're just not seeing that because we're not exposed to that right mm -hmm. so yeah i like that I like exactly that. and oh sorry <laughs> go, on, go ahead go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> this, it just it made me think of something but the human mind tends to focus on the negative it's a tendency that we all have. It's like we're almost pre-programmed to focus on the negative, especially when it comes to ourselves. Yeah. So when we do social comparisons, it always kind of falls into the, oh, the grass is greener on the other side. You know, I wish I, wish I was like that. Um, so to, in terms of role models, to, to go back to that, one movement that I like a lot on social media right now is body positivity, because it does showcase imperfection as a positive thing and not so much of a negative thing so when we when we talked about what's the perfect role model earlier when it comes to body positive bo body positivity i think i think we're really on the right track here you know in terms of what's that's i think people that are like that and show different types of bodies especially when it comes to women we have so much pressure on our shoulders oh yeah, oh, yeah. you know you got it bad like <laughs> yeah <laughs> we really do yeah okay. exactly well i love everybody's uh points actually i want to say this so i remember there's a kid i'm a big basketball uh fan and there's a um a basketball player by the name of charles barkley so way back like and I think in the 90s, when he was, he was, he was an active player, he once said, I think, I don't know if it was an interview or something, but someone asked him like, hey, like, you should act like a role model because, you know, he was committing, not saying crimes, but he did something, maybe a, a mistake. And then people from the media were like, oh, why should, why are you acting like this? You're famous. You should be a role model. And then he said the famous quote of, I am not a role model. And I honestly think that we should like our role model should be our parents first. If your parents are not your role model, then they kind of failed in their job, right? Because then what's going to happen is you're going to search for role models somewhere else from people you don't even know. You're never going to even probably going to touch them or even talk to them face to face. So from afar, you'll be like, oh, yeah, for example, Kendall Jenner, or it could be, I don't know, uh, Michael Jackson or anybody like, oh, this is, this is my like, this is almost like my dad or my mom, but you don't even know that person. So honestly, it's not even realistic to have role models like that's not your parents. I would say it's more influences. 
So if they can be a good influence in your life, then perfect. But role model, I don't think they should even have, we shouldn't even have, well, ex, like celebrities or per, certain people of status should even be, look at role models. I feel like they should just be, do their thing and we look at them, okay, are they giving me a good influence or a bad influence? And then from, from that, I can judge it and kind of, you know, mm -hmm. decide on what I gotta do. Because like Florence said previously, you know, at the end of the day, you have one life, you have to make your own decision. You have to make sure that you take care of yourself. So the celebrity, like a Kendall Jenner, I'm not saying she doesn't care about you, but she doesn't know you. So she doesn't necessarily care about <laughs> how you're right. gonna live your life. So you have to control your life and make your best decisions, right? So also, that's what I mean, yeah. And cause I mean, just to, you know, on top of that too, cause it's like, yeah, you know, you grow up with certain influences in your life. It could be parents, it could be like guardians, whoever's, you know, whoever you look up to. Yeah, but then there's that certain quality where it's like you have to be like it's like you have to know what you want out of life right you have to have that level of like self-reflection so that when you when you do look at people like celebrities or people like you know like, that you know on tv and they might not be promoting something that's like genuinely positive but they're well liked right so people that like don't really uh have a good compass or they're not focused on what they want out of life they might fall into some of these things where it's like okay you know somebody i look up to they're 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 doing certain things that like um it, it could be mayhem it could be like you know chair girl in toronto you know it's like they're, they're portraying a badass image that like seems cool because that's what you know is being pushed in the media but then it's like if you don't have that good um sense of self-awareness then how do you you know how do you decipher which is um it'll be hard to decipher who to follow or who's like a good positivity or positive role model in your life and who's a bad positive or a bad, <laughs> a negative role model. You know, you know what I'm trying to say, you know? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Maybe to add on top of that, to kind yeah. of like, um, I'll, I'll add my own like psychological touch to it. <laughs> yeah, I like that. There's a... There's <laughs> there's, there's two type of motivation right there's intrinsic motivation and mm. I'm, I, I, may, I want to make sure that I pronounce those correctly in, in English because I study in French so my mind works in French same here <laughs> that's the <a> disclaimer <laughs> um, there's intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation so when we think of role models those are external factors mm -hmm. uh but the most powerful motivation and that has been proven and it's the one that is the most durable for mm -hmm. us individuals is the intrinsic motivation mm -hmm. so to have your own aspirations and to have your own personal goal and your own sense of purpose mm -hmm. is what will remain with you till the end of your life external factors are constantly changing that's probably why your idea of a role model or your role model that you have right now it's not going to be the same in 10 years mm -hmm. you know that's so like yeah that. a role model is fine but at the end of the day like i think a little bit like amy frank said i think it's it's more important to have examples than role models like mm -hmm. See, see what someone does and you're like, oh, wow, I really like this. I wish I could do that. I don't want to be them, you know, but oh, I really like this. This is something I wish I could do. And then you work towards that and it becomes intrinsic motivation. So, cool. you know, I, I wanted to add on that. I think it's really that that it comes for you. Like it comes from you. And to add on what you added, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, um, I think that we should, we should indeed just take what's good and leave what's bad but also not just have one person to look up to have difference just because not one person is perfect right and if let's be honest we don't have the same um we don't we won't have the same path as them but at the same time we can still grab some inspirations that they give us here and there and then make that and you know just like maybe draw that on your little board and be like okay tomorrow this is what i'm gonna do and um have this inspiration from yourself from within like you said so I don't know like I don't know if it makes sense what I'm saying right now but if you take more than one person you have more um more examples more good things to look towards right absolutely no I agree with that 100% because it's like the more people that you um are exposed to right the more people that you're 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 looking into then it, some people who like worship one celebrity that's, that's, that's how life needs to be. Through that one celebrity, they found the answer and they're going to just follow their footsteps. 
right? So it's like, if they don't have many options to like assess, oh, what's different with this person? What's different with this person? You know, they're, they're not broadening the horizons. They're like sticking to just one answer instead of what mm -hmm. could be, you know, many answers, right? So it kind of, um, I, I don't know, like uh, Frank, uh, do you have, you want anything to add? Because I, I was going to step into the, the article piece that we found there. You know what? We can go ahead with the studies slash articles yeah. regarding the topic. So, okay. there's, so there's two that we kind of, you know, focus on. Uh, the first one, which was done in the UK in 2010, they, done, they did like a little survey with a thousand 16 year old. So, uh, you know, male and female. And they asked that one question to everyone. What would you like to do for your career, right? And 54% of them answered that they wanted to become a celebrity. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's more than half, like 4%, more than 50% of the 16-year-old kids or teenagers. Yeah. And then by contrast, only 15% of them, of the teens, says they wanted to pursue a medical career, right? So then it pretty much, they had like a little conclusion to say that if there are more people that want to be famous rather than helpful and beneficial to society. So when I read that article or that study, I was like, yeah, it's kind of frightening because if you think about it, uh -huh. It's like when we talk about role models, like, yeah, it's fine that you can have people like celebrities that are, you know, your role models. But mm -hmm. if you look at them in a point where, like, you don't even look at necessarily a uh, profession, because celebrity is not like um, Sigma Leo, shout out to him on our last episode. He mentioned right. that, like, you know, a celebrity is just someone that is very famous. But the but when it comes to like what they do, all of them have different professions. It's not like once you're a celebrity, you're only on one lane. Like there's artists, you know what I mean? There's entrepreneurs, there's different fields where you can become a celebrity. So when kids yeah. say, yeah, I want to become a celebrity. It's like, but what do you mean? It's like, it's not, there's no substance. It's like, you just want to become someone that's famous. Yeah. It's kind of sad to, to, to read that because I would rather have more kids that are educated and either you decide to do something that's related to your education or through your education, you're able to build yourself maybe a business or do something of your own. But mm -hmm. to become a celebrity, I don't know if it's just me, but that just feel like it's kind of sad. It's like, I don't know if the world is really going the right way and the wrong way. What would be your thoughts, <clears throat> uh, Noura, Florence, and Khalilo? I think that I totally agree with what you just said. And I feel like back in the days when people became celebrity is because they were doing something that either entertained, either helped, or, you know, like, I don't know, scientists and stuff like that, or singers, right? They were doing something first. They weren't, they weren't just saying, I'm going to become a celebrity. They're like, okay, I want to play music because this is what I like. And it makes people around me happy. And eventually they would, they would succeed and then become famous. Right. But right now everyone is like, oh, I want to be a celebrity. And they just want to be a celebrity without even with, without even um, doing anything, you know, without even helping anyone, without entertaining, really. They just want to be at that level and that's it. They don't even know what they're going to do when they get there. They just want, let's say, free stuff, um, fame, attention, the, it, attention and literally. Yep. So it's, it's, it's not that's good because <laughs> back then, yeah. But, um, yeah, back then, like, you would really have like put in value into the your fans i guess but right now it's just no 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 i want to be a celebrity and be famous and be the hot shot and be on magazine and you red carpet you know and that's it exactly it's um it's like they're missing that piece they they, they want the result they okay i want i want so i want to be a celebrity so it's like mm -hmm. you know you want that attention you want that fame you want that admiration but then they it's like if that's your answer it's like, what's, what's your passion first? You know what I mean? Because it's like, it's through your passion that you actually become a celebrity, right? Because mm -hmm. if you're looking for attention and not trying to be uh, introspective about your life, then it's like, yeah, you're just going to fall into doing things that like bring you clout or, you know, just things that like <laughs> you see. It's like a uh, boom gang, you know, like people like that, people that like cause like, you know, mayhem in order to get like uh, views and likes because of the mm -hmm. Right, so I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Yeah. How about and you, Ross? Yeah, just it, it, same same thing kind of uh, uh, what you were saying, you guys were saying, but one statistic actually that really scared me in that article, I think it was like 68% didn't know 
like what oh. they want, like how they wanted to become famous. I think that's, I think becoming famous, it's, it's very general, you know, you could want to become famous because you want to find a cure to yeah. something, but then your motivations shouldn't be the fame, it should be finding the cure to help sure. you. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so I think becoming famous is a result of your passion. If you're good at it, if you're talented at it, it mm -hmm. shouldn't be the, to, to go back to motivations. It shouldn't be your motivation. It should be an end result. And in your mind, it shouldn't be like a catastrophe if it doesn't happen, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you're practicing something that you like. Right. So being famous isn't a career. I think that's where, you know, I think, I think that's where like, uh, I think there were 16 years old. Yeah. Well, the majority of, of, you know, that generation in that study, unfortunately, I, they, they didn't really grasp it. Don't, it doesn't seem like they grasp the concept of career. Being famous isn't a career. Exactly. Um, and unfortunately, like to come back to role models, unfortunately, I think that's because of role models of a lot of role models that are heavily mediatized right now that are all famous yeah. and a lot of them were kind of just like why are they famous and then you go back and you thought like okay reality tv you yeah. know porn <laughs> porn yeah, all that stuff yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 exactly yeah um and i mean and i'm here it, it's 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 controversial at the same time because I don't want to judge people's aspiration but being in my mind in my opinion being famous and nothing else yeah. is is a weird aspiration to have because it's not durable it's not durable and it, you can't you can't create drive out of yeah. wanting to be famous yeah. you need more but at the same time they're not even like it is frightening right because they have in their head, this is a plan. This is my plan A, they don't have any plan B, but even to achieve the plan A, they don't even know what to do. They're just there like, oh yeah, it's gonna happen one day if I just stay pretty on Instagram. You know, it doesn't, it's, it's just weird. Like after that, when that's not gonna happen, they're gonna have a really bad midlife crisis, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> and you have a lot of people and the there. amount of midlife crisis that we're gonna have when we're gonna be 50, oh my God, I don't even wanna think about it. <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. Because like, especially nowadays, you know, you have a lot of people dealing with like depression and stress and mm -hmm. like uh, anxiety, you know? So oh, like, yeah, um, yeah. yeah actually maybe Florence, maybe you can tell us a little bit about like the anxiety portion of it. Because I feel like that's a lot of people, they, they go through anxiety, they have a lot of anxiety. So I mean, maybe like what could be day-to-day -day things that like uh, are contributing to those type of, type of things? Have you noticed anything? Social media is definitely one of them, yeah. you know? Yeah. Okay. Uh, social, I mean, there are other factors you know there's there's main stressors uh life stressors so if we think about big events but then there's everyday things and social media is is definitely a relevant one in our day and age unfortunately and something that we realize that contributes to that is uh social comparison so uh kind of like i mentioned earlier the the grass is greener on the on the other side you kind of tend to see everybody's life on social media because they I mean it, I, I'm generalizing here but a lot of it on social media is showcasing only the positive we we you know we hear that a lot so we're being I think we're being more mindful of it we're being more careful about it but still subconsciously it's still affecting us when you see oh wow like she's in Mexico you know I'm broke <laughs> Yo, that's so true. That's so true. <laughs> It's like, what am I doing wrong? Like, <laughs> yeah. And that causes anxiety because then you're like, wow, what, what am I doing with my life? And sh should I be making more money if I want to make more money? And then it just, it, it snowballs, snowball effects. So, so many questions and mm -hmm. existential questions too. And it all starts with social media. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we have, that's why like, I have a love and hate relationship with Instagram because I'm seeing... Mm -hmm a lot of positivity on Instagram right now. And you know what issues right now going on like uh, with Palestine and everything, I think social media is definitely important because you know, there's a lot of censorship taking with this issue specifically and social media is kind of the new news for that. It allows us to spread the message. So I'm not condemning social media in any way. I just think it, we need to be more careful, more careful, you know, especially when it concerns body image, it concerns our everyday lives. 
we just need to be mindful in comparing each, each other. I don't think that's healthy to, us, to a certain extent, maybe, but in general, no. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah, uh, before I, I'm going to tip it to you, Frank, but like, I always felt like um, the most important thing out of life or the most interesting thing that should be figured out in life is, is, is yourself first. I mean, otherwise, then why are you, right? <laughs> right so it's like there's an importance in in, in like uh figuring out who you are and what you're all about and then you know after you find your passion and your craft then that's what you're sharing and bring it to the world right so that's when you're starting to interact and maybe you know you're seeing comparisons and stuff like this and those could be constructive criticism they could be positive but only if you if you're if you're you're stable and you like understand yourself first yeah. right would you guys like agree with something like that or would yeah. you add to that or how do you feel about that Definitely. Definitely. Like it starts with yourself first and then you explore uh, the comparisons between other people or you share ideas because somebody that like has an idea and they share it, but if they don't have that groundness to themselves, the feedback they're going to be getting, it could, it, it could feel like heavy criticism. It could feel like hate when it's actually something that's there for you to, you know, grow and like um, question. Because if you have a belief, somebody questions your belief. Oh, how, how did you come to this conclusion? Yeah. If you don't know yourself, then it's, you're going to feel lost. You're going to feel threatened exactly. and defensive, right? Yeah, I mean, to quote RuPaul, which is a very credible source, <laughs> you need to love yourself before you can love anybody else. And I think that applies in terms of like your own personal knowledge of yourself too. I think in this quarantine, I got to know, like I, I didn't really, I realized I didn't know myself. You know? I didn't know myself that much. Now I'm spending time with myself and I, I completely agree with you. I think knowing yourself is very important when it comes to comparison because then you're more objective and you're more constructive in your comparison and you won't have as much of a tendency i think to lower yourself down that's right that's right um, how about you frank yeah. what's the rev got to say <laughs> i would say this the like you know as Flahas mentioned like you know with social media there's the good and the bad i think the bad thing about social media sometimes is it's very hard for someone to focus on themselves when everything they see, it's about someone else's lifestyle. Because right. there's even another study, right? That's the second article that we use for the, um, for the, for the topic of this week, right? And this one is kind of like the, the opposite of the first article, right? So on this one, they actually mentioned that early adults who kind of become, became like a celebrity worshiper actually had a quality of life that is in a good category on each dimension, which is physical health, uh, their well-being, like psychologically their well-being, and social relationship, right? And I think of like, you know, like, for example, on Instagram, right? There's people where their day-to-day -day life is very similar to other people where they go to Dubai, they go to certain places, and they have access to a lot of things that is, you know, like money-related, you know, jewelries, food, and the lifestyle is beautiful, right? So imagine someone that is broke and is at their home, and they open their Instagram, and the first thing they see is what? Is someone... Uh, in Mexico and Dubai living their life. So they yeah, think, yeah. oh man, they're having a blast. So I should actually work my ass off to become like them and be able to go around the world and do those type of, you know, and have that similar lifestyle. So in a funny way, I think uh, social media, sometimes it becomes a distraction to the point where you kind of don't have a chance to know yourself because social media has so much distraction. So I think sometimes some people, they live through a lifestyle they think that's what they should live through just because they don't know anything about themselves because they've been so focused on social media and they haven't had the chance to actually disconnect from that world of social media. Yeah, so that's, that's my opinion about it. I think, I think what you said makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. um, but when you said that, when you said that um, sometimes they see this as an inspiration to work harder and eventually get the money and go travel themselves, go travel as well. Yeah. I believe that a lot, it could be the, the case and that would be good, but a lot, is, um, a lot of people, unfortunately, they just waste their time. Mm. We don't, like people our age, let me be honest with y'all, it's hard for us to see social media and it's so fun, it's entertaining and to put it down and to go study, you know what I mean? Mm. Or put it down and go, do stuff that you don't want to do but you have to do yeah. so unfortunately like there it, there are like some people that see it as a motivation and they actually do something about it but there's also people that are just there staring at it and be like oh I wish my life was like this 
and you know that's it and also there's hard worker like all of us right here looking at social media and be like and seeing that other people are just out there being pretty and you know having fun and getting likes getting um and views and which equates to money as well and then we're out there like okay so are we working for nothing and then then you can you you can if you don't know yourself and if you don't really know what you truly want you can get lost in the in the sauce you know so, yeah facts facts major facts <laughs> yeah but uh going back to <laughs> going back to the, the the study too about how some people when they worship celebrity their quality of life was like still somewhat good according to the study so let me ask everybody so how would you explain that 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 um, that result that some people they can worship or idolize certain celebrities and from it they can have a pretty good life or quality life? How would you explain that that correlation? If I ask everyone, could it be? I'm not sure. Could it be that the people that actually have the time to mm -hmm. do so is because they don't have to deal with other stressful situation? Because let's be honest, if you have if you don't have money to put a roof over your head, mm -hmm. you're not gonna, you're not gonna have the time to go on social media. When I was younger, not that I didn't have money, uh, but I just wanted to, you know, to yeah. get my yeah. coins, right? So I had two, three jobs in the summer, just running around working, working, working. I didn't have the time to go on social media or I was playing sports. I didn't have the time because I was focused on other things, you know? Mm -hmm. But I mean, at the same time, it could be just because that, just because they don't have to do all those tasks, they can still go on social media and chat with their friends over there. And also after that, just go to like, say, I don't know, the gym. And then when they're at the gym, snap a selfie for social media and then come back. You know, I don't Maybe. Well, that's a good theory. What about you, Florence? Um, There was actually one thing that really surprised me in this article, and it was the fact that there was a correlation between good self-esteem and celebrity like celebrity worshiping that was one of the things that was mentioned and that like surprised me i would have thought the opposite right i would have thought bad self-esteem so i'm assuming they're they're so it, 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 maybe they're they're kind of like forgetting themselves along the way and they're you know so it's it's hard to talk about self-esteem when you're focused on somebody else entirely um because there was, you know, there was different, I think in the article, different levels of celebrity worshiping. And one of them was pathological. So, <laughs> so yeah. I can just, I mean, maybe it's because you forget yourself along the way. So it's very, like I said, it's very hard to talk about self-esteem if you're not even focused on yourself and you're focused on, on somebody else. It's, mm -hmm. it's almost like instead of having a life goal, you're living for someone else and through someone else, yeah, which... Right? You know, um, the thing is with quality of life, especially with psychological, is that I'm assuming, you know, you could kind of live through an illusion of having a good life, feeling good. But then once you kind of like disconnect and like, wow, I'm living through someone else, then you could kind of shut down, you know? So maybe these people just didn't have that realization yet. Once again, those are all opinions, you know, I'm just... No, oh, for sure, yeah. We all neutral over here, you know? Just yeah. so <laughs> All neutral. <laughs> no, but, but, that's yeah. what I, but that's what I love about the, the podcast too is because like, you know, like me and Khalilo, every time we have conversations is through theories, opinions. So yeah, no, if you have an opinion or theory, say it, you know, don't, don't, don't be scared of it. That's what <laughs> we do every right. time. But also uh, going back to Flahance, I think if someone is able someone to keep is able up to a, a lifestyle, right? From that lifestyle that they can keep up, it kind of, it can give them a quality of life that they want until something bad happens where they, they're not able to afford that lifestyle, then that's where they're going to become lost. And they're going to be like, oh man, like, what am I going to do? Because their whole purpose of life was pretty much, I got to follow a certain lifestyle. And if I'm able to sustain it, perfect. Like, you know, I'm going to, my, I have a lot of, a lot of friends or social interactions, my well-being, psychology, uh, well, psychology, you think, yeah, it's good enough. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, your quality of life in general will be good enough because you're following that lifestyle. So I think lifestyle is one big thing that celebrities or people that have this high status, they're not even necessarily imposing that to people, but because they have so much money and a big status, naturally, because social media, we have pictures and videos, 
and you see it and right away it's like oh mm -hmm. you want to have the same lifestyle even though those celebrities are not even maybe trying to give you that lifestyle but because of what they have it's like it's because you know they've reached a status so that's their lifestyle but they're not maybe trying to push people to become like you know like, yeah like, they don't want you to become like them but because of social media we're exposed to everything so it's easy for someone to follow a lifestyle and be like oh this is this is happiness for me like that's i'm right. able to go to dubai to certain places and you know i mean i go to bars every day like that's that's happiness for me that's so, success yeah that's success. i feel so bad for like uh, what could, I, I feel like this is uh, like a strong, uh, a strong. Like I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna go back to high school on this one, okay. right? Because you have you have kids who experience their childhood. Uh, everything's like free. You know, you can be yourself and you interact with friends and stuff like that. But like, so once you get to high school, you have people who, uh, you know, they try to fit in if they're not fitting in, right? So for the people who try to find their image uh, through high school, you know, I, I feel like it's a time where they try to, you know, wear different hats just to see where they fit in. Okay, let me try this group. Uh, you know, okay, no, I'm not like them. Let me try this group, this group, this group. Uh, if they fall into like, a, if they have a negative kind of um, a role model in their life, right? Because a lot of people, you know, especially, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna shout out hip hop on that, you know, like a lot of stuff that they rap about is, is stuff that you can't really live. Not really, not, not without heavy consequences, right? So if you have that kind of influence and you, you see like, like, hey, that stuff, that stuff works. Those kind of people, they get attention. They get, they get the women. You know, if they're women, they get the men. You know, and it's like they get the, they get the bag, they get the money, all this stuff. So now you follow those celebrities and you try to fit in and wear that hat throughout high school. So it's like um, it may work. And you know, these role models that 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 you that people worship, it may work. You know, because that's what people, that's people they have, they throw their attention to that. They like that kind of stuff, right? But, but then you'll get to a point where it's like, oh, you graduate and now you have to start your real life. You know, and it's like once you start your real life, whether it's like post-secondary or, you know, you start working and all this stuff, like I feel like that's where people, they, they get hit with a different kind of, um, what's that? What am I trying to say? They get hit with different kind of perspectives okay. where it's like maybe if it, it worked with your friend crew back in high school, but now you're trying to carry that kind of mentality into, uh, you know, your work life. Yeah. And it's, it's like it hits different. And so some people, they, they, they even fall to that like kind of depression where it's like, who am I really, you know? They get asked questions where it's like, oh, you know, maybe you want, you want this, you want a perfect woman, right? Somebody that you see, that's, that's like somebody that you would, would like idolize, somebody that's smart, somebody that's like all this stuff, you know, you're ride or die, your body to your Clyde, right? But then based on what you're exposed to and who you're influenced by, you may find yourself around the wrong kind of women or the wrong, wrong kind of men because you've been following people that like aren't, they don't have your best interest at heart, right? So. Like that's that's why I feel like you know when when people are asking those sixteen year olds, uh, what's what, what do you want out of life? Oh, I want to be a celebrity. Those are the like same kind of people that might fall into that or that would you know would fall into that trap and then end up um, being lost later on in life with those midlife crises. Uh, you know, even just like because people in their twenties, man, like they stress it nowadays. Oh yeah, you know, it's, yep. yeah, right. It's like there's a lot to be uh, depressed about especially with social media, you have cyberbullying, where it's like if somebody's throwing shade on your, on your social presence, the whole world, like through the internet is watching, right? So it's like, you get devastated in that, you're gonna be put on a, on a, on a, like a level of depression that's like unheard of, unprecedented. Mm -hmm. right? So um, yeah, pretty much, uh, let's see, the gist of what I'm trying to say is, um, yeah, people, people, they need, to, they need to wake up to who they are and they need to like analyze themselves and find out, that's why I like people, you know what, uh, shout outs to Inua for uh, bringing up the idea of, you know, taking a break from social media, oh, yeah. right? You know, he gave us the 30, 30 day challenge, it's like uh, step away from social media, focus on your life and like what you're all about. That stuff like, stuff like that is hella important. So that's why I say shout outs to him because it's like, yeah, um, yeah, it gives you that moment to, you know, step away from whatever you're being influenced by. And it's like, you get to find out what you're all about. You know, you can read stuff that you like or you can go outside and experience nature without feeling the need to like show the world that hey i'm living my life right now experiencing nature yeah. like you know you don't need to do that if if, if you're like, if you find out what your what your passion is it doesn't nobody else needs to see that except for yourself you know what i mean like you you find it through yourself if it comes to a time where it's like you have a business and it, and it focuses around that stuff then for sure you're going to promote it but in the right kind of sense not in the sense for like attention for people to validate like what you're or who you are how you look and, and stuff like this yeah. Oh. yeah, well, 
I don't know about you guys, but I, I, you know, quarantine was such an awakening time for me because I was isolated for a very long time. Uh, I live alone in my <laughs> place. So I got to know myself on different levels and it really changed my uh, outlook on life. And I had more goals than ever. Okay, don't get me wrong. I got really anxious and I got really depressed too. So there's, you know, there's, there's high and low, you know, about being alone. But the good side is that I feel like I really got to know myself and it did have an impact on, you know, my outlook on life and what I want for myself and what I want to pursue. So to go back a little bit um, to what you said, I think it's very important, you know, to to know yourself before anything else. Mm -hmm. It changes everything. It really does. It and it's it seems it seems so cliche to say. Right, right. (laughs) You know, hundred percent. Harder than it looks. It's really harder than it looks because there's you're constantly influenced by we're constantly influenced by external factors. Mm. So, and, and, and even if it's not consciously, it's subconsciously. So, mm. you know, it's, it's it, to, to really live authentically, I think is, it's difficult. It's yeah. difficult. It takes practice. <laughs> I'm a, I'm definitely, a, oh. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, it's definitely difficult, but I think that because we are young adults, it's even worse because growing up, we're told what to do. When we go to school, we're told what we what we should be doing, what we should like, and you know, our friends are saying are saying, "Oh yeah, this is the cool stuff. If you don't do this, you're not good." You know what I mean? And then now that we are either in university or graduated, and we're alone and we're trying to find ourselves, like it's so hard to find yourself. So it's already it's already um difficult there and then there's social media that are out there telling you oh yeah this is how you should act this is what people like so this is what I should do and then if you're not focused you can never make it and if you don't make it right now you won't have a strategy for your future and you you won't have goals and stuff like that even if like even if you're at school for let's say law school and stuff like that yeah. You might not even want this. Maybe that's your parent that helped you out with it. You know what I mean? You have to yeah. focus in order for you to understand what you want. And then eventually um, it'll come to well, you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that. And um, so I was just, just going to slip in that I, I, I noticed I was watching a show. So, you know, whoever knows the real facts of this, like, please, you know, share that with us. But uh, I heard that in like Ivy League schools or, you know, those like top notch schools, um, private schools, stuff like that, you know, where they're like really rich and wealthy. The way they like I heard that a rule was that you're, you're, you're not supposed to have television in the home. You know, you're not supposed to have like uh, things that would that would uh, bring about external influence. Right. Because like they want to they want to they want to polish minds to the to the level where it's like from childhood. You know, if you don't, if you don't, if you're not around these kind of influences, then it, it gives you the opportunity to look at yourself as the most important thing, right? Because then it's like, if, if, you, if you look at yourself as the most important thing before being exposed to social media, then you're gonna be, you're gonna be such a, a grounded individual to the point where it's like, um, you're gonna see value in yourself, and you're probably gonna find levels of like high levels of success simply because you know you're not you're not thinking and comparing yourself to like oh the next celebrity oh this person walked the red carpet man they had like a nice fine suit or something like that so you know let me let me aim to strive uh, a fine nice suit so I can post it on my Instagram you know because then it's like well, your, your short-term goal you're changing it from something that can actually be positive long-term into like short-term gratification you know what what makes you look good you're trying to sell an image instead of like um instead of selling what uh, what your essence is all, is about you know no oh, that's yeah. good that's what i noticed but i hope somebody has an answer out there about like that rule of like the whole tv thing so if you do you know i'm listening that's We're all very interesting, interesting. Yeah. i didn't Never know that that's very interesting Never heard of the two yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's interesting but uh oh actually you do that too <laughs> yeah we, we could i mean you know once once we have kids <laughs> I mean, <Yeah. laughs> you gotta go to them ivy leagues you know <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if, if we're rich enough, yeah, we can bring this up. Yeah, yeah. Then, oh, uh, next thing I wanted to bring up too, right? So we mm-hmm. spoke about the two articles or studies regarding the topic of role models slash celebrity worship. 
there's actually a post that Khalilo and that actually came out with the whole topic. Oh, it was right. a post on Instagram with two individuals, right? Two ladies. So it was Kendall Jenner on the left, <laughs> where's yeah, a picture of her, um, like in a bikini or something, and it went viral, right? Yeah. And then on the right, you had Alyssa. What's her last name, Khalilo? Uh, so like, let's see. I have the article here. So it's saying maybe we can like even edit like a little picture of it. But like, uh, so on the left side. Screen. There's, oh, I wish I could. I mean, I could share my phone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like right here. But just to, so you know, you got Kendall right here, and then you have Alyssa Carson right there. Right. right. So what it says is that so on the left, American model Kendall Jenner in a swimming suit showing um, what for many is the perfect body in a woman. A few days ago, this picture went viral. So like in the span of just like a day or two. Yep. Right. And then on the right, you have Alyssa Carson. The 19 year old astronaut who became the youngest person in history to pass all NASA aerospace tests and who is now preparing to be the first uh, human to travel to Mars. And then they ask, Have you ever heard of her? Most of the answers are no. And so it, it, it continues to say, I think it's about time we rethink ideals and aspirations as a society, don't you? Our daughters need role models to look up to, not to look at. I like that one. So like that last line there, we need role models to look up to, but not to look at. Because I feel like it's like, it's like um, external versus internal value, right? So I mean, with those two categories, I mean, what do you guys think about that? Like external versus the internal? Actually, before the answer, actually, and Noha and Flahat, I want to ask them, if you had to choose between a role model, right? Like your ideal role model, will it be more towards Kendall Jenner or toward the girl Alyssa? the astronaut if you had to choose i don't i don't think you guys will be surprised it will be more towards Alyssa. already like mm -hmm. i don't really see um kendall jenner as a role model that's to me i don't really know her like that to be honest i don't really know her life and stuff like that but i i used to model right and mm -hmm. i never looked at her like oh that's my role role model because she was also a model you know what i mean i don't see her that way because i believe it's deeper than that you it's like the girl is uh, Alyssa that's what her that's her name uh, yep Alyssa Carson yeah Alyssa okay so yeah so she's working very hard for what she's doing she's not asking to be famous this is really her hard work that's that's giving her this fame or not not fame but you know this e exposure I guess we can say and she really deserves it the other girl I'm not saying she doesn't deserve it but at the same time like it's really because she has well I mean she has well, we, everyone knows her family, right? That's and right. then she yeah. has the physical aspect that is um, that is wanted when it comes to modeling and stuff like that. So I don't, to me, it's going to be Alyssa. That's, that's all. Okay, okay, okay. And what about you, Flahans? I couldn't, you know, same answer. Um, <laughs> I, I couldn't make someone my role model purely based on physical features, you know? Yeah. I couldn't do that. And in that case, you know, the picture went viral because it was a bikini pic. Well, well we have to say things how they are, you know? That's right, that's uh, right. It was a bikini pic and it, it featured what I think is very unrealistic um, expectations of what a woman's body should look like. I'm not saying it should, but like, those are, th this is like promoting what beauty should be you know in a way because she's a very strong uh image of the model industry that's why and yeah. i i couldn't you know or let's say we have that and on the other hand we have her family yeah. as well that is very notorious <laughs> You're right. yeah. um, and I, I i couldn't make someone my role model based on those factors it wouldn't make any sense to me mm. it really wouldn't but on the other side hard work uh intellect uh ambition determination uh those are things that i can definitely you know minus even Alyssa, just those traits in general are things that i want for myself um and that i work towards yeah. you know having yeah. so i think that's my answer based on all of those qualifications you know i'm 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 I choose Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, so then if I ask uh, Noura again and Florence, so why why is Kendall Jenner more talked about than like her, well, it's not even really an achievement. I mean, it's a, like I said, bikini pic. It shouldn't be really an achievement, but yeah. nowadays I feel like the world, how it is, is kind of like superficial. 
So the beauty overweighs intelligence. Um, so that's my opinion. But why would you, why do you think that we put so much importance on Kendall Jenner and the girl Alyssa, like what she's doing at 19, it's insane. It's crazy, right? Yeah. But doesn't get much recognition or even before Kilo sent me the thing, I had no clue who was Alyssa or what she did, right? Before he sent me that post. But I'm, I'm for sure I know if someone tried to do the research online, like Instagram, for example, it would probably take them 30 minutes maybe to find that person, Alyssa, rather than Kendall Jenner is going to be the first post that's going to appear on your, on your Instagram feed. So what would be your theory or opinion on why one is so talked about and then when it comes to someone that's not in terms of like beauty and aesthetics, it's more about their work ethic, it's less talked about? Would be my question. <laughs> Frankie coming in hot with the heavy questions. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> that is a heavy question. I don't even know if I have an answer. I mean, it comes back to society. You know, why why does society is why is society first of all so obsessed with beauty and so obsessed with creating a beauty ideal? You know, especially for well, for men too, definitely, you know, when you think of uh gym picks and the you know ideals the uh, mm -hmm. in, in terms of like sportswear and things like that obviously yeah. um but the model industry like for women is definitely like a big aspect of setting i think unrealistic expectations and why is that why is there such an i think that's like a question that if we answered that question we would probably end up answering your question as well why is society so focused on physical appearance and so focused on beauty because when you look at social media like apps are almost all based out of even dating apps, dating apps. Dating apps yeah. are like, it's like a catalog it's like oh i like uh, like this like, you know it's almost it's almost like oh sorry about it. it's almost like your instagram but on another platform it's like it's your pics it's everything about you it's pretty much the same as your yeah your yeah. instagram but yeah continue Florence. sorry about that thing. oh <laughs> well, I was almost done. I mean, at the same time, you know, I, I like taking nice pictures of myself. It's fun. Mm -hmm. I get it. I'm not trying to be a hypocrite here because, you know, I do like taking nice pictures of myself. Mm -hmm. But what I've changed recently is that I, I post them for me more than because before something that I remember doing is like when I post posted things, I was very self-aware of the number of likes you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. and I don't know why. It was just something on my mind. Mm -hmm. And it was strictly based out of how I looked, right? It was like, how many people like my physique? That's yeah. what it was. How many people like the way that I look? Yeah. Very depressing. If you think that way, it's very depressing. Now I treat more my Instagram page as, you know, uh, I, for me, the, the most important likes are my friends because I see their pictures too. And it's kind of like, an, I treat it as an artistic platform and things like that. Okay. Um, but it's your mindset, mindset matters. If you go on Instagram thinking that physical beauty is the most important thing ever, it's very easy to get depressed. It kind of like goes back to what we were talking about when we were social comparison or things like that. Hmm. I don't, I don't okay, I'm blabbering, but to answer your question, I don't know why beauty is so important. I really don't. Maybe someone else can answer that, but I really don't know why we put so much accent on beauty in society, you know? I, I appreciate your honesty, you, Flaha. Uh, uh, yeah, Nora, because I mean, you said you're a model, right? I used to. Used to I mean, okay. ever since COVID, I kind of stopped and focused on my YouTube channel, which is better, but yeah. yeah. So, I mean, Coming from that, like, or having, or having put in that model realm or that model world, like, uh, you know, what, what can you share about that for us? Ooh. Okay, so I'm going to try. It's going to be hard, but I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back in time, however. Okay. So um, I'm going to generalize a lot here, just so everyone knows. Um, if, if we start with men, I believe men, they see, they like to see nice things. They like to see nice women nice places nice everything okay i mean everyone do but i'm just gonna start with the men and um when when you think of it when they were making movies back in the days it was more for men so the women that were on the movie 
on those movies they were filmed in a certain angle wearing certain clothes and stuff like that right mm -hmm. and a lot of um, people can call that I think uh, man gaze man gazing or something like that okay. yes so um now that that evolved we kept that same um notion when we do when we make movies and stuff like that now that there's social media everyone is trying to be like those nice pretty ladies in the movies and uh, we try to imitate that with the like mm -hmm. hair flowing or the slow motion or that little look that that you do the femme fatale persona I guess mm -hmm. and I believe that this it kind of continued in social media and then at the end of the day when you see all of that you see in you in movies you, men like it already so they give it attention and not like women we don't necessarily need to fight for men's attention but however I believe that this is still something that we do um in general so while when we do it when we do all of that um it, it becomes that it becomes wait what am I going to say yeah it looks it seems like we are fighting for men's attention and we're doing all kinds of stuff putting all type of makeup um surgeries doing all of that because men and so on social media they like to see nice things and so us we're focused on beauty they're focused on beauty and then it all becomes beauty 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 trends stuff like that so I don't know if I hopefully that makes sense. Oh no, it does. Yeah, I would think it in French would make more sense. <laughs> no, I, no, it's actually a very it's like the way you said it is very like it's very simple to understand. And I didn't actually think of that, but it actually kind of makes sense because if you think about it, yeah, obviously me and Kalilo we're not we're not women, we're not a girl, so we don't know what it is to be one. And as Lahan said when she mentioned about uh when she was posting pics, when at one time she was searching for something out of the pics. And then afterwards, it was kind of just like, oh, I'm doing it for myself. I don't really care about the others. But I think there's that pressure of, not pressure, but more like once you create a platform, maybe as a girl, maybe you have the thinking of, okay, if I post certain pics, it's going to get me a lot of attention. And if I see that, well, because, you know, guys, if guys are attracted to that, they're going to come to you. And you'll be like, you know what? Let me feed them with more of this. And it's going to exactly. become a, a cycle, a vicious cycle. Yes. Every time you have to perform and put some pictures. It's almost like a, there's some people where they're not even a model per se. But if you look at their IG page, you would think they're a model because everything yeah. they pick, it's about their beauty and aesthetics and nothing else. It's really And you will see them in real life. And sometimes it's not even the same thing because they're pausing with their greatest angles and stuff like that. And I'm not even saying they're ugly in real life. They're just normal, right? But <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah, just it they're normal in real life. And then in, in Instagram, they're like top model, like you said. It's just, it's, it doesn't make sense anymore. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And uh, one thing I want to add before we move to that subject, yeah. I realized um, when I shoot my YouTube videos, oftentimes I put makeup on. Okay. Um, one of the things that I was told when I started is put makeup on put a lot do what the trend is because this is what's going to get you views and subscribers right so then i i started doing it but then i'm not even a person that put on makeup on a daily basis i do it yes for shoots and stuff like that but i mean it kind of felt like a fraud because if you see me in real life most of the time i'm not even wearing makeup you know what i mean so i was like okay i i i had to, to sit down and think a little bit why why am i actually putting all those makeup and doing all these extra extravagant styles with my hair and stuff like that if this is not me in in general like i can get ready for like i can be getting ready for an hour or two just for my video you know it doesn't make sense and all of that it's it it can it that like i don't feel good about doing that but at the same time i'm realizing that it's not necessary and this is unfortunately what we do and what we don't need, what, what we should not be doing because mm -hmm. everywhere on YouTube, all the women have makeup on, right? And I see this and I'm like, I want to start. Maybe I should put makeup on like them so I can have less blemishes and for, so I can have more subscribers because of my beauty. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you're doing a YouTube channel for what you want to say, what you want to show, not necessarily how you look like only, yep. but it's always it's always the the main factor that that they that tend to attract subscribers i think oh uh, yeah. i have a question or uh, let's see because 
uh, both sides are important, right? I feel like uh, you have the internal, which is like, you know, maybe uh, Alyssa Cow, uh, Carson's, um, you know, lifestyle. Uh, and then you have um, the external, which is like Kendall Jenner. So how you feel about, uh, because they're both very important. I feel like the, the good thing that might come out of like, you know, physical images and stuff like that. Like, I feel like if, if somebody would market that, it would be in terms of like, oh, you know, maybe like fitness and health. Maybe that's where it would be nice, right? But um, uh, let's see. So, I mean, what do you feel about people that like, ha that, that try to be balanced with that, right? Because I mean, two sides of the, of the same, uh, two sides of like a similar concept, you know, just to stick with one, you know, you're, you're missing a whole side of the other, uh, you're missing half of the other world, right? So, I mean, because like, I feel like you guys, you know, it'd be very, it'd be very balanced, right? You guys come here, you have substance, you know, you have quality to you, right? But then on the other, you know, as well, you guys have like physical attributes that like, you know, would draw people in and it would, it would be like, oh man, you know, like who's talking? Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So, so, I mean, like, I love the sense of balance and I feel like that's very important, but maybe you guys can elaborate more on like how people can attain that balance in a, in a, in a proper way without falling victim to like, uh, you know, influence, negative influence and stuff like that. Like, how would you maintain balance? That's a very good point though, because you know how we mentioned before that maybe Kendall Jenner was setting unrealistic expectations mm -hmm. for body image. I, I do think that Alyssa is not necessarily, like if your expectation would be to become the youngest astronaut, it's not realistic either, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> is important to mention it, although maybe it represents a more intellect side of thing and maybe qualities that uh, we judge we as individual, we would prefer to aspire to those things. It still doesn't make it realistic. Um, and I, I, I do think balance is super important in life. I, I think like I would consider myself someone who is an academic, I guess, just because I'm, you know, I'm a student and uh, my, my, I'm, I'm very focused on research right now and things like that. But if I define myself through that exclusively, it becomes very depressing because I feel like I'm more than that. I feel like that's why it's important to not just put all of your eggs in the same basket. No, um, you know, so uh, also being a student, you're under an extreme amount of, of pressure. I mean, applying to PhD is like a part-time job. It truly is <laughs> yeah. um, just that in itself. And it was very important for me to keep a social life and to, workout was hard but I would try to work out once in a while and I would try to eat things that I liked and eat things that were still healthy I would try I would make a, a conscious effort although it wouldn't always happen I would try to make a conscious effort mm -hmm. because that's what keep me sane mentally and if I wasn't sane mentally then I couldn't have achieved my goals so I think ultimately if you want to achieve goals you have to have balance because health needs to be there and mm -hmm sanity i'm talking about like you know how you feel inside it needs to be there too um so just even little things like that like going on walks it sounds so ridiculous but if you if if, if you put it into your everyday routine i think it will make a huge difference in terms of your your life quality you know 100 percent. yeah i like that and how about you uh, Nula? yeah um i totally agree with what florent said it's, it is very important to have both and not to put all your eggs in one basket, especially in today's age. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you, need to, you need to focus on yourself, like what you are within, as well as what you are portraying, right? How you look like and stuff like that. It's good to be clean. It's good to, you know, do your hair and stuff like that, right? You don't, I believe that we could maybe draw the line where, where like, um, when it gets a bit too much and I mean when us women I'm just going to use makeup as an example makeup is pretty much like an everyday thing now everywhere we go we see women wearing makeup and I have and I know people that unfortunately they cannot leave their house without wearing makeup because they just need to be always beat face beat you know snatch everything you know what I mean and that to me is a bit extra like that's just my humble opinion mm -hmm. you should be able to assume yourself the way that you look and be proud of it and you know just show yourself to the world like that as well as 
how you look like when you have makeup. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I believe that when it comes to the like out, outer beauty, it like we 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 should care about how we look, but we shouldn't um, let this surpass everything else. It shouldn't be the number one uh, standard. You know how the like we shouldn't determine. You know what Mar Martin Luther King said? Mm -hmm. Judge a person not by their well, he said the color of his skin, but I mean, at the same time, not by their appearance, but by the contents of their character. You know what I mean? So we should have both focus on your on your looks, but don't give it your number one priority, because at the end of the day, a lot of people do say that our body is just the um, the the vehicle, the, um, the the drive, the the, the the vehicle, the vessel. <laughs> exactly. The vehicles of our soul, right? Of, who we are within so yeah. yes we should care about it because it is our temple right but at the same time you should definitely feed yourself your inner self yeah, more. yeah. spiritual side oh, yeah Galilo, uh, yeah. actually mm -hmm. i want to i want to bring another frankie's theories oh let's go okay everybody know everybody knows. <laughs> what's frankie got a theory you know like no, open your ears open your ears <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love everybody's points, Laraz, Nura, and Khalilo too. I'm gonna say this, maybe, okay, obviously I'm not a woman, I'm not a girl, but as a guy, to see me women flourish more, I have a theory, I'm gonna say this, if women can push more on the intelligent, like, how can I explain it? It's okay, so there's, in the world, there's so many beautiful women, and it's subjective too, so one can be beautiful to one, per, one guy, and then, uh, you know, Maybe one other guy say, oh, nah, she's not my type. So like beauty, beauty, like beauty, it's everywhere. Like women, that's something that's different than what like guys, I'm not saying guys were ugly, but we're not looked at as, like beauty is not as necessarily important as in women, how it is in society, right? But I think we actually have to push the mind and the intelligence more than the beauty. Because I think right now, the way it is, with women, beauty, is, is overvalued. It's like, yes, you know, there's beautiful women, but if we focus too much on that, rather than actually educated women and women that maybe do achievements where it's not based on their beauty, but it's based on their knowledge, if we can push that at the top and maybe lower down a bit the beauty, like, yeah, obviously you're still beautiful, but not put so much focus on it, I think women can actually flourish more in society. That's yeah. my theory, because I think right now, I stand, like, if we always push on beauty, looks, beauty, looks, and everything that we see, for example, on social media is, oh, this girl is beautiful. Oh, this girl is like this. I don't see how, like, for women, things are going to be better. That's my my theory of the day. So uh, I, I like that. And I, actually, just to, to, to add on to that, let's see. Because, I mean, there's each individual person, you know, they all, they all you know, they have something something of like worthwhile quality to bring into this world otherwise then you know, like why are you here <laughs> you know so it's like i mean you you come here and you're here to learn and you're here to like um you know build your own idea and and share what you created out of the world right but then it's like if if people don't have that uh you know it could be men it could be women but if if, if you get lost in that in that like entanglement of oh you know let me let me express uh or let me let me search for validation through my physicality you know, this, this is what people are doing. This is how I can get noticed. This is how I can get liked. You know, there's there's that, but then it's like, yeah, if, if there's that imbalance, you know, it's like it's like what they say, too much of anything is a bad thing, right? So if you're too much on, on, on one side of the scale, then, you know, the scale's gonna be imbalanced and you're not, you're not gonna be, uh, you're not gonna find like holistic qualities that, uh, about yourself, right? But then it's like, um, yeah, it's like, you know, we go back to the concept of balance. It, people who can find that, that balance and achieve that kind of quality, you know, like that's, I feel like that's a different ball game because it's like, you can go into the world, you know, and you know, you're comfortable with being who you are, right? So you can like, whenever you share a part of yourself, it's not about like the likes that you're getting. It's, it's about the content that you're sharing, right? And then so it's like, on top of that, if you have an idea and you, you figured out your, your passion or your quality and you want to share that with the world, with the influence of physicality as well. Like, I mean, that you're, you're reaching out to everybody because you have that sense of balance. You know, you, there's, the, there's the intellectual world who are gonna, you know, love what you're saying and love what you're putting out there. And then there's the other side of the world that are like, oh, you know, oh man, yo, this girl looks cute. All right, yo, let me, let me check this out, 
right? And then boom, you know, you're watching the video and, and it's like, you, you notice that what they're saying is, you know, it, it might touch people who are mostly, they, they, they picked your, your post because they found you attractive. But through that attraction, they were able to get a glimpse of your quality, you know, and whether they rock with that or not, it's like, you know, you still, you're still playing the game and you're still, uh, through that sense of balance, you're still able to um, connect to many different people because you understand both sides of the scale. You know, like, at least that's, you know, that's, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I see Flaws, do you disagree on something? Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I do. Okay, I wanna hear it, that's what it's all about. <laughs> I wanna hear it, let's go. Do, do you see something wrong with that though? Of like picking a post because someone's attractive? Uh, there's, there's something problematic about that, don't you think? Because mm -hmm. once again, yes, it is about balance. And when it comes to taking care of your physical self, that is important. But if we talk about being attractive, mm -hmm. that's where I think it's something that should change. I don't think you should, you know, you should click on something online or access something online because of someone's physique. You should be there for what they have to say. For Absolutely. Someone's I agree with that. Entirely. That was the only thing where I was like, yeah. you know, I... It, it's just unfortunate and you're right a lot of people would click because at first they would like what they see but I do think that's unfortunate I I do think that's unfortunate I feel like we should and and yes of course they'll stay for the content that is true but I do think it's unfortunate that we'll still you know and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of including myself because we're all human and we all have that instinct of yeah. being a, a, attracted to, to things that are people and things that are attracted. I think there was statistics actually on that um, where, you know, people that were good looking and more chances of getting a job than the people that were mm -hmm. less good looking. And that's, that's crazy to me because, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with the qualification. So that's where, that's, that's why I made my little face, you know? Yeah, but I feel like, Oh, sorry. I was just going to, I was just going to finish my point. Yep. Uh, it's like, unfortunately, yeah, there, there are people that are going to be looking at your content, you know, because, because of like your attractive qualities and stuff like this. So mm -hmm. I feel like it, it kind of gives you the opportunity to, um, to, or it gives, it, it, it like gives your quality the opportunity to be heard from like all different angles. There's the people that like, you know, love quality to the content and they're going to be looking for the intellectual stuff first. But then for the people that like, are maybe passing by and they're looking for something nice. Unfortunately, there are out there, <laughs> right? So it's like- if, oh, you're right. Yeah. Oh, you're right. No, but uh, I think you're a hundred percent right that there are a lot of people like that. Mm -hmm. And we probably all have a little bit of that in us because, you know, like I said, we're human and it's just, it's kind of, kind of almost instinctive. But yeah. I'm just saying, I think that is something that we should work towards changing. Absolutely. Yeah. And, but, oh, oh, yeah. I, Oh, sorry, Rev. Um, but I also, <laughs> I also want to say that it's, yes, we are human. So it is the way that we think and stuff like that. But at the same time, it is harder to know what people are saying. Like if you, if you have 10 people on your timeline, okay, and they're talking about something, mm -hmm. you could, you could click on each and every one of the, of the video just to see who's talking and stuff like that. But at the, at the same time, you would have to click on all of them to know which one actually brought value to you but it's easier to click on the one that's prettier right and mm -hmm. hope that they're the one that gives you value but the thing is I believe it's not necessarily good however it is what we do but I there's also this thing that if we only go for the prettier the the prettiest I mean mm -hmm. then it gets it then it, it is a problem but at the end of the day, like you have the right to choose. It's like it's like a color. This is my favorite color. So if it has, let's say, purple on it, I'm going to click on that video. Not necessarily out of I'm not coming to attack someone. I'm not I'm no, not attack. I'm not coming from a bad. Um, a negative kind of I guess. Yeah, 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 I don't have bad intentions. But at the same time, like this is what's attractive to me. And I will give this a, ch a shot first. And then, you know, that's how it works. It is problematic. I agree with that. Yeah. However, it it's hard not to do that. It just it becomes a problem when you only do it if that's the only way that you sort your information and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what I about think, you, Frank? Yeah, yeah. So I think too the like going back to the little discussion between Kalilo and Flahans, 
about the whole okay so if you could, if you think about it right so when you post things on your social media right and you get a lot of attention and think of for example if we talk about women women that post only about their aesthetics and they actually make money out of it sometimes beauty actually makes you lazy where this there could be a lady where she is probably one of the smartest people if you ever have the chance to speak with that person but based on their content it's just all physical right but for them if they get the money that they want and the attention then in a weird way why why should why should they even have their I'm not saying they shouldn't have opinions but why should they provide their opinions on certain things if they're making money out of their aesthetics it's almost like you're asking them to do things because intelligence like like that's something i wanted to say too is not really sexy nowadays like we say that yeah you know what i mean like we we we, we want people that's educated uh, that have a lot of knowledge and whatnot but if you look on social media for example oftentimes what we see and is most liked and appreciated is beauty so if beauty is more appreciated then most people are not gonna think oh you know what let me put something smart on my post no you know what I'm just gonna put some uh, beautiful pictures because that's what, how I'm making my money or that's how I'm getting my attention. So what is the point of doing something else where I'm actually doing well in this, in my, in the beauty aspect of things. Mm. So yeah, that was kind of like my opinion. I wanted to maybe to back up a bit, like I understand Florence's uh, uh, opinion about how it's, it's unhealthy. I get that because I'm more, I lean more towards intelligence over beauty because as I said, beauty, it's always going to be there. But actually, I wanted to bring up a scenario that, or one or two scenarios to kind of explain how women and men, maybe that's where sometimes there's that there's those issues. So first, right? So if I if I think if you think of guys of men in the world that are very known for what they've done through their minds, right? So you have like Elon Musk, you have, I don't know, Jordan Peterson, there's like specific one. Yeah. When it comes to women, can you name like many? There's not like oftentimes the one that we talk a lot about on social media are who? The one that, that are looked through their aesthetics. So Kendall Jenner, the whole Kardashian family. There's like specifics where it's always the looks. But we don't really talk about the ones, like the brightest ones. They're not put into the top of the pyramid. And one last thing too, think of this scenario. If we're all like, for example, Florence, Nura, me, and Khalilo, we're all in an island, right? We're stuck in an island and we have to survive. Are we gonna survive based on our looks? No, we have to use our mind to survive. So we have to know, how am I gonna make a fire? Like beauty, it works until there's some things where beauty just doesn't matter. It, when mm -hmm. it comes to survival, when it comes to instincts, it's like, yeah, you might be the prettiest girl or prettiest guy, but we don't care. Right now we need to make a fire. So let's make a fire. But if you yeah, have yeah. No, no clue how to make a fire because everything in your life is based on your aesthetics, then yes, like, like that's unhealthy. But because society, like I think money is the issues because money, it's really pushing towards beauty and intelligence is like, nah, we're not gonna fund you guys so much money. I think it's just, that's the, the main issue. It's just money is just not really giving intelligence a chance over beauty. That's my theory. Yeah. I, I feel like even though like, cause it could, it could be out there, you know, there are a lot of like, you know, uh, people that are focused on the intellectual side and, and they find great levels of success. But yeah. then it's also like what the media chooses to put out there, right? And it's like, why, right? It's like, it goes back to the question, like, why is there a certain standard to to what, be what beauty is? You know, you have like uh, models where it's like, oh, no, I'm sorry, you have to be a certain uh, like height, you have to be a certain size and you have to have certain measurements and everything like that to be considered yeah. a model or work in that world. But then you have like... Um, um, you have the game changers, you know, the people that like uh, put out r more realistic uh, ideals of what beauty is. You know, you have like uh, like plus size models now, you know, and they're doing their thing because it's, it's so strange, right? Like in, 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 in the Western culture, um, you know, skinny and stuff like that. That's what that's what beautiful is. But then you have like a lot of like uh, Central or Eastern cultures where it's like you being um, a certain size that like West might find obese or whatever. That, not obese, that's exaggerated, but like just, you know, plus size. Yeah. Okay, there we go. You know, like those would be stuff that would be like, oh man, you know, you're, you have you have character to you, you have quality, like, you know, you're wealthy, you know, you can, you can, yes. you can get to those levels of like weight and, and uh, success physically, right? So that's why I'm just like, 
I, I like the fact, I like that thing, you know, there's, there's more plus size models, there's more like different styles models, short models, I've been seeing that too. And it's just like, they're really changing the game and it's, and it's, it's a more proper image. Um, instead of like sticking like, to like one side of the scale, it's like now you have like so many different individuals and you have like so many different like um, um, uh, assets that are actually beautiful that need to be brought out in the world. And it's always nice seeing people uh, confident um, no matter what size they are. Cause it's like, if you, once you have that confidence, you know, there might be somebody that's just like, oh, you know what? I need, I need a man with like, you know, 10 pack or whatever. But then, you know, they marry the man that has like a beer belly. Why? Because he has certain internal qualities that like override whatever physical um, images you feel are, 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 are right in your head, right? So um, yeah, I forget the gist of what that all was about, but like, <laughs> Y'all, y'all feel me with that, right? <laughs> yeah. On top of that, too, I just wanted to say, I mean, what do you feel about, like, uh, somebody like Rihanna? Because, I mean, I don't know too much about her, but I know that she uh, she's favored greatly for her physical attributes. But now she's, like, wasn't she an ambassador and stuff? She's getting more, like, um, governmental. She's getting more, like, uh, in, in touch with, like, uh, countries' affairs and stuff like that. So, I mean, do you guys know about all of that? Heard about that? No? I only heard about her, like she's very popping with her makeup line, that I know, but I don't know about yeah. the, the affairs. I'm not too sure. Okay, let's, yeah. let's, let's see if I can find I haven't it. heard about anything being an ambassador. Yeah. You, oh, no? But okay. at the same time, I'm not really into uh, celebrities like celebrities like that. Yeah. I just yeah. see them and I hear from them from off of Instagram and then that's it, you know? Yeah. Says, I do know that celebrities are getting more and more involved politically that mm -hmm. is something that i like yeah. you know i think that's that's definitely important especially yeah. when it's well done <laughs> exactly exactly because it's like oh people you know they're attracted to you for like maybe other things but now you're already you know you have their acceptance and so now whatever you say you know you're being heard and everything because she became she was appointed the ambassador of barbados the barbados government right so yeah that's what um oh and let's see here because it says uh, Rihanna was appointed, so this was September 20th, I wish they put it a year, because I know it was like years ago, <laughs> mm -hmm. but um, yeah, she was appointed by the Barbados government as an ambassador, extraordinary, and uh, plainy pontieri, that is, <laughs> but specifically, um, with specific responsibility for promoting education, tourism, and investment in, uh, for the island. You see, so she's using her influence to actually better yeah. the country. Make positive impact. Like, yeah, yeah long-term goals, that would be like stuff that long-term goals would have you know well at least do that balance right because it's like okay mm -hmm. you have yeah, i think that's out. great mm -hmm. i think that's great to to use your influence for the better mm -hmm. i think see that's role model-esque right <laughs> yeah <laughs> that it is yeah well said uh, yeah actually yeah that would be like it's like uh, it's kind of like okay yes if you've been successful in something you have to make sure to somewhat because the thing is if you think about it once you treat a certain status and you have, you know, you make so much money, like, yeah, it's great to make a lot of money. You can help out your family, your legacy, but like so much money, sometimes it's like, you have to give away your money somewhere. You have to do something other than just yourself and yourself, right? Or like your family or friends. It's like sometimes do something that could do a positive impact for an actual country or for other individual in society. If yeah. you're able to do that, yeah, that would actually kind of be like the, if you if you want to have a select like I, I don't really have celebrities that I'm uh, it's like my role models I, I don't believe that should be something it's not I don't think it's really healthy to have it I think you can have influences sometimes but or motivators but role models like and eh, I don't know I don't know about celebrities but someone like Rihanna if you want to have a celebrity uh, like a good influence or like a role model yeah Rihanna could should, she, she has potential like mm -hmm. I, I need to need, I need to know more about what like she's doing with like her country, but from what I'm understanding, yeah, she would probably be that's like a, a, a top yeah. candidate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's true. That's true. As if she used her fame as a strategy to finally have her end goal, and I don't know what her end goal is, but I mean it's as if, right? Because right now she's a she's a businesswoman with her um, with her makeup line and stuff like that. And then as she's also an ambassador and she's doing a lot of good things. Right now, she hasn't dropped a song in so long because she's focusing on herself and on her growth in other aspects of her life. So it's very, very interesting. 
Yeah. And she's being critiqued for that, actually. A lot yeah. of people, yeah. people, a lot of her fans are pressuring her to mm. release music. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she's prioritizing other things, you know? And if by other things also means important political causes, then I think it's amazing. <laughs> like people, they should be looking into like, are interested in that. Because it's like, okay, you went from music. I, 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 I want to hear your next track and all that stuff. But it's like the fact that you're not putting out music. It's like, what else are you looking into? Because if, if that's if that's a celebrity that somebody worships, then I mean, it would be interesting to find out where where, where else they're putting their attention to, right? And it's like if if it's somebody that like, um, you know, obviously understands themselves and everything like that, then they can take little cues and hints. Because yeah, I, I, I like you know what Frankie said, um, like not to put celebrity as a role model, but you know, there's certain characteristics and traits that they have that that might be beneficial to your life as well. You know, it's like, it's like watching a celebrity, for example, prepare for a role. You know what I mean? Like they, 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 they go to the gym or whatever they do, what they need to do. Uh, when they post that kind of stuff, it's, it's, it's very inspiring because it's like they have a goal and they're willing to work so, so hard to achieve that goal. And then when you, when you see them maybe acting out a role or something like that, you get to see the success of their, the hard work that they put in. So to that degree, it's like, oh yeah, you know, um, like that they're not my role model but there's still a lot of things that i can learn out of how they're living their life that can that can help me you know also do what i want to do and stuff like that you know it kind of gives you like a, a different perspective of uh, from maybe what you are thinking about you know yeah no it makes sense and too like you know we live in a world where you're not you're not living alone you have other human beings with you so it's natural that you're going to be influenced or have role models i just think maybe i don't know what would be got your everyone your conclusion about the whole topic like uh, maybe my conclusion would be just maybe just make sure to I don't know, just be smart about who you're picking to be your role models slash influences just don't go with the ones that are um trendy or the ones that maybe are making a lot of money and you think oh money equals happiness so I have to follow that you know celebrity or that person so that would be my conclusion. What would be you guys' conclusion, Florence or Noura? Mm -hmm. um, making sure they align with my personal beliefs. Mm -hmm. And maybe instead of having the ideal of needing a role model, you know, um, maybe just looking at people that you find that are good examples. We talked about that. Yeah. And using them at, as inspiration. But as long as you're focused on your personal growth and the personal knowledge that you have of yourself, uh, I think it's it can be actually beneficial to, you know, use other people as a positive example. And we also put a lot of accent on balance. And I really do think balance is important in life, you know? Yeah. So as long as you stay balanced through all of that, I think it can be healthy to to look at other people for positive inspiration and things and things like that. So like that's that. kind of what I'm getting from this. <laughs> Yeah, for sure, for sure. Good stuff. Man. What about I would you? say the same thing. Like I would add to what you're saying because this is really something that I wanted to say as well. Mm -hmm. I personally don't have a role model because I don't see one person as my end goal. And if I start seeing that way, seeing things that way, I will lose myself. So I would say just don't focus your um don't focus all your time on trying to be someone else. You have to create those. Um, you have to be someone else's role model and that someone else should be yourself. So pretty much walk in a path that you would like in 20 years for you to see yourself and be like, oh, I'm glad I did that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, take examples here and there, put that with your life. If that, does, if that doesn't work, leave them and keep going instead of just following one person blindly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man, great answers. And Kilo, do you have something yeah. better? Uh, <laughs> I agree with the two of them. There we go. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, no, I, I really got to say, like, if, if, if I were to say anything, it's like, yeah, um, you know, understand yourself first, you know, take your time, especially like like um, what Florence was saying, you know, like the, 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 the pandemic, it can give you an opportunity to, to isolate yourself and reassess yourself. yourself. You know, you got to, you had, you got the chance to live life and now you're put in a position where you, you you're, you're kind of almost forced to think about yourself for a minute, right? So in that minute, it's like, if you can find a level of um, clarity and acceptance for who you are, then that should come first. You know what I mean? So like, 
uh, once you accept yourself, then that's where you put yourself out in the world. And um, you know, you're able to, to, to share and absorb ideas and uh, come up with even better conclusions than what you had before, simply because you know, you're choosing to share with other people instead of keeping it to yourself. That's one thing I've noticed about like uh, uh, people who maybe are like insecure and stuff like that. And I've even dealt with that myself too. You know, it's like, it's, it's, you get to a point where it's like, you have your own thoughts, but then if you feel unstable with yourself, it's like, you kind of feel uncomfortable with sharing that to the world. So somebody in that kind of a position, social, social media and everything like that, yeah. like you're more susceptible to be becoming influenced in a, in a negative way. Um, if you're insecure and you're, you're trying to, you're trying to hide those insecurities, right? But if you take the, the time for yourself to um, assess those insecurities and find out what you're really all about, then what you're going to bring to the table is going to be top tier. It's going to be next level. So um, yeah, understand yourself, then understand the world. And then through that, I, 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 like, you know, find that balance. So that's like, you know, just the, like, that's what I absorbed from like, you know, all, all three of you. So Yo, yeah, you, like, like, you want to bring competition? You want to be a rev too, a reverend? Yeah, I'm trying, man. I'm trying to go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that collar first. <laughs> oh, okay. There can only be one reverend in the podcast, okay? We got to be. We got to be. <laughs> this man's going I want to say out. one more thing. Go ahead. I don't know if it's a quote that I heard somewhere, or if it's you know, or if I invented it. I don't know. But I mean, <laughs> um, nobody has ever succeeded their life by focusing on someone else's. So I mean, at the end of the day, we have to focus on ourselves, and that's what's gonna, you know, give her motivation and make it that's in the future. Little, <laughs> little, 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 oh, that's great. Yo, with all I mean we could continue for hours, but we have for to days. end one day for days exactly. But yeah. we have to end one day. But you know I think it's a perfect time to relax a bit and go with our little segment which is music Dang. for days segment. That's right. That's right. So like every week our fans for days knows we bring a new song for everyone. Uh, so who has a song in mind? I always, I always like to go last because I don't want to have the same song as you guys. I doubt it, maybe, but it could happen. So yeah. who wants to go first? Anybody? Okay, maybe I'll break the ice and then break <laughs> give you the <laughs> So let's see. Uh, oh, man, it's so hard to say because, like, I listen to a lot. Oh, okay, you know what? I'm going to hit you guys with some old school. And, you know, because, like, I write music myself and everything like that. And one of my... Uh, biggest inspirations like people just a, a, a group that I really love and I like their vibe and, and if I were to write music or anything like that which I do like I'm kind of like I, I that's the kind of style I look towards to find um, just a nice a nice you know experience in my music right mm -hmm. so uh, I'm gonna go with the the far side the real ones out there they know <laughs> so the far side and I'm gonna go with the song uh, drop and on top of that, so not only is it a dope song, check out the video because it's hella creative. They're a very creative um, uh, group. Mm -hmm. And um, the beat itself was produced by the legendary Jay Dilla. So, I mean, if y'all don't know who Jay Dilla is, just stop and like just <laughs> pause this video, just search Jay Dilla first and then come back. Because, <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, he, he's, a, he's a master in his craft. And so just check out that. It's just levels of creativity. I love that. But yeah, yeah. I, I remember you brought up a far side song way back. Some yeah, of that, yeah right <laughs> back. I remember, I remember. That's good. Right, no, I, I'll laugh if it's the same one that I'm bringing up now. Like if I brought it up on the podcast before, this just know it's that good, in my opinion. <laughs> That's good stuff. And then who's next? Florence, Noura, who wants to go? Um, sure, I can go next. <laughs> sure. <that's good. laughs> um, okay, so well, my song is uh, by Miss Lauren Hill. And yeah. it's called I Gotta Find Peace of Mind. I don't really, like, I, I honestly listen to so many songs that I didn't know which one to choose. So I just put my phone on shuffle. I'm like, okay, Miss Lauren Hill is going to be. And it's something that I like to listen just when I do, when I'm doing something, you know? Like, mm -hmm. it's a nice melody. It's relaxing. And it's, it's um, she's giving you words of wisdom, I gotta say. So I really do like that song. I got to find peace of mind by Miss Lauren Hill. Awesome. That's a, yeah, Lauren Hill. That's a legend right there. Okay. That's yeah. A great song. That's yeah. a great song. <laughs> and Florence, I know you, you know, maybe do you have something in mind? 
The same? I do have something in mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not as well as a throwback. I've been listening to a lot of Erica Badu recently. Oh, yeah. I love her. <laughs> you guys are on point. I like this. Yo, it was good vibes. <laughs> um, one of my favorite songs by her is Green Eyes. It's like a, it's a journey. It's an amazing heartbreak song too. <laughs> like if you need a song to like cry to I, and just yeah. <laughs> vibe to. <laughs> Um, and it, it's like progressive. It changes a lot. It's very long. It's kind of jazzy at the same time. And I love her. So, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's a throwback, but it's a song that I always come back to. That's why I chose this one. Let's go. You got three throwbacks. Yo, Frankie, what's, what's oh, the record? Oh, no. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is I had like a couple songs. I had two songs, one maybe newer, one throwback. So Kalilo, should I go with the throwback or a new song? Yo, let's see. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Whichever, <laughs> it's hard to say because it's like, are you gonna continue the, the the vibe or are you gonna you gonna hit us with something maybe even well, better? You know, so like whatever you have. Well, look, well, look. You know, I'm an R&B guy. They mentioned Erica Badu, okay. Lauren Hill. That's like in the R&B world. Uh, far side, is it rap or is it R&B? Uh, it, it's rap. It's rap. But it is throwback. So I, I'm still on that wagon. <laughs> You know what? You know what? I'm a, I, just for this episode. I'm gonna bring a throwback song. That's my dude, Music Chill Child. Oh, I love that guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was actually I while was working on some stuff today. I was listening to a, one of his like best songs, I, I think, or classic. It's a uh, Teach Me, and that song, man. Ooh, that hits different, man. It's kind of just like talking it. about like how you want to learn how to love. Like, is is this R&B classic? So I'm gonna go with Music Soul Child. Teach Me. Yo. Yo, everybody, everybody here, like, I like that. It was a nice throwback, but like just the, the quality and the music as well. People that are, it's just all creative artists, right? And that's what I, that's what I like about your choices. Yeah. So, I mean, um, let's see. Does anybody else have anything else that they want to share before, you know, maybe things are concluded? Like any, any final thoughts? Ideas? Yeah, maybe. Advice? Maybe advice or something. <laughs> I don't have a, well, maybe it's an advice, I don't know, but we just have to, we should realize that most of the time, the people that are out there on social media and giving us content mm -hmm. are not the majority of us. So yeah. they do not dictate the, what the majority of the people our age yeah. are living. And we should not, we should not see this and be so serious about what their life is because I'm not gonna lie, even their life don't look like that. They just stage it. We we are in front of cameras right now. We can show the amount of room that we want to and have like a mess on the other side if we want it. You know what I mean? It's like, People, don't don't mess, see... <laughs> <laughs> People don't see what's what you don't want them to see. So at the end of the day, we should uh, always remember that. Yeah, absolutely. It's good. And uh, what about Florence, uh, Mr. Rev? Ooh. I think that was a great way to end. I mean, those, <laughs> <That is. laughs> those were wise words right there. Yeah, yeah Kalilo, I was about to say the exact same thing. I knew she read my mind. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you just trying to take your credit. <laughs> That's what Reverend no. do, Kalilo. Sometimes, Reverend, we have to pick up some lies from other people. It's that, oh, okay, yo. I snapped to that. I snapped to that. Yeah. Nice. This man's trying to hold on to that rev title, you know? He's coming, he's going after that collar. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? Before we end, uh, Noura, Florence, want to, you know, plug anything, your Instagram, your YouTube, anything you want to plug in for people to find you, to reach you at? Yeah. Where can we find you and learn more about you? Exactly. <laughs> sure. I'm not, uh, I'm not like that big into social media, but my Instagram is flow underscore au quotidien, which means flow on the daily in French. If ever you want to know how to spell it out. Probably, yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. Otherwise, uh, check out my future articles. <laughs> hey, I know. is going to become a doctor in a few years. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to follow that. Follow that. Follow that. That's that <laughs> <laughs> If you ever need therapy, we could go see Florence. Yeah, I'm my session right yeah. now. No? <laughs> I, I, I don't know, but hey. I mean, yeah. no conflict of interest there. <laughs> like that, like that. and there's gonna be a lot of people stressed out soon like we said so true <laughs> true true and then what about you know i know you're a youtuber so gotta plug in your youtube <laughs> yes so um my youtube channel is noura n-o-u-r-a-a -A, talks t-a-l-k-s 
it is in French, but I mean, you can come through and still, you know, learn a little bit. Like you, Kalilo. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Yo, I got, I got the episode set up right here. <laughs> there you go. And my Instagram is Afro, Afro underscore V B Y Y. So, awesome. yeah. That's awesome. So and okay. you know, I got to say, uh, thank you so much. You guys have been For amazing. Sure. And it's been like a wonderful conversation, wonderful episode. Mm. So um, anytime you guys have any topics or anything that you also want to bring to the table, you know, we're always ready for that. Um, we need to come back. About, yep. Was that? Yeah. I was about to, you're, like once you're a guest on our uh, conversation for today's podcast, you're always welcome to come back at oh, any always. time. Any time. Oh, nice. That's yeah. right. So, you know, we look forward <laughs> to that. And, uh, you know, to everybody watching out there, once again, don't forget to like, subscribe, you know, um, Apple, Apple, Spotify, podcast but give us those five stars if you like what you see if you don't like what you see comment you know let's have let's have a nice debate let's talk about it you know like like real human beings right so uh to all you great folk out there you know stay tuned for the next episode uh always stay safe happy and healthy and uh do your thing do your thing for sure and yeah again Florence, Nura, thank you very much we're very appreciative humble about it and uh, for people who's watching us our friends for days we'll be back next week with another episode. So stay tuned, stay tuned. And yeah, everyone, au revoir. Peace. Au revoir. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs>